Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? We can take our seats. We can get started. Again, I want to say good morning and welcome to Oakland Church of Christ. Today is Sunday, December 30th, which is the last Sunday of this year. Amen? We are provided with another opportunity to praise and worship the Lord today. If you are joining us via Facebook, we ask that you come and join us in person the next time you're in the area. I thank God for being here this morning. We are afforded with another opportunity to continue to build God's kingdom by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us take a pause to prepare our minds and hearts as we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. O oh, gracious and almighty God, our sole provider, our strength, our healer, and our redeemer, faithful and forgiving Father. We adore your name and glorify you forever. We thank you for allowing us to gather in this building to worship and praise you today and spread the goodness of your name through the opportunities that you provide. We ask for your forgiveness of sin. We ask for patience and clear discernment as we strive to continue to work together in unity for the edification of your name. Today, we recall your faithfulness and mercy. We come to you with open hearts and minds. And this moment, we call upon you with praise and thanksgiving. Come into our presence this morning, Lord. Allow our worship and service to be acceptable and pleasing to you. Fellowship with us. Visit with us with your overwhelming presence. And make your blessings abundant in our worship service today. Yeah. As Jesus said, we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning's opening scripture will come from Psalms <laughs> chapter 86, <clears throat> verses 9 through 10. And it reads as follows All the nations you have made will come and worship before you. Lord, they will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Yeah. Now let's open up our hearts and lift up our voices as Brother Sam leads us in song this morning, followed by the opening prayer and we the like this. Yeah, there it is. 
I will be reading from James chapter 2, starting from verse 1. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there, or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not committed among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are, who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith? and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are judging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blessing the noble name to him whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, Love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet supposed to at this one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, You shall not commit adultery, also said, You shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you become a lawbreaker. <clears throat> Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law and get freedom. Because judgment without mercy 
so these children anywhere who have not been part of the program. Mercy triumphs over justice. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, that someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of them says, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I'll share my faith by my deeds. Believe that there is one God. Good. But you believe that and shut up. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father ever considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith is active working together. His faith was made complete by what he did. The scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, he was given to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. We come to the part of worship service where we have an opportunity to give back a small portion of what God has given us. If you're a guest today, you're welcome to give, but please do not go out and give to do so. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8, the Bible states that, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Please follow me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, gracious God, we thank you for providing for all of our needs. Yeah. At, the, at the right time, which is always your time, Lord. Yeah. We thank you for the trials and tribulations. We thank you for the gifts that allow us to help others. Yeah. And for the building and strengthening of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. While the collection plate is being passed around, I have a few announcements that I'd like to highlight this morning. If you have any first time guests this morning, will you please stand? We have a gift that we would like to extend to you and your family. Thank you for coming out today. If you're looking for a church home, we welcome you to the Church of Christ. That's all I have. New Year's Eve celebration. I'm open with you celebrating New Year's Eve. On Monday, um, starting at 9 a.m. Um, until 2 a.m. The theme for this evening is the late release of Renew, followed by a message by Gail Calhoun. Open, we're also sponsoring the annual New Year's Eve breakfast, uh, which will start Tuesday, January 1st at 10 a.m. The marriage ministry, Beyond I Do, will be starting the Girl and Rogers Conference Call starting. Wednesday, January the 2nd, um, at 6 a.m. This is an opportunity for the marriage couples to connect and to receive daily prayer messages from the marriage ministry. Men's fellowship will start on January 4th, um, 7 p.m. in the Oprah. Brothers, please come out and support that effort. 2019 Ladies' Day planning meeting. Calling on local ladies and planning for 2019 Ladies' Day. 
will get underway for 2019 and will start next Sunday, January the 6th at 1 30 p.m. Please give Sister Craig for additional details. The prison ministry. Prison ministry will start their first meeting on Sunday, January 20, 2019, following Sunday service. Please see Deanna for additional questions. I have a few cards here. Give me a second. Yeah. And it's just 
beam, I can't see nothing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, let the Spirit of the Lord, let it rise upon us. Let the Spirit of the Lord, let it rise. Come on and let the praise of our King rise upon us. Let it rise. And he brought us to this point. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, there's something about looking back. Uh, when you look back and you, uh, there's that song that says, and I wondered how I got over. My soul looks back and wonders how I got over. There's so many things that uh, we uh, had to go through in life and this, this past year, and, and we wonder how we got over. But we know that it is through the help of the Lord, Amen. Amen. God being on our side. Amen. In fact, the scriptures say, if God had not been well, on my side, yeah. where would I be Amen. if it weren't for the Lord? Amen. I can say that every day, where would I be yeah. if it weren't for the Lord? Amen. We're so thankful unto God that he has blessed us uh, to see the dawn of a a new year. We know that we have to get through another day. Yes. But we just thank God for what he's given us thus far. Amen. Somebody has said, and I agree, if God doesn't bless me any more than what he has blessed me, he's blessed me enough. Amen. He's blessed me enough. Amen. So I'm thankful this morning. I'm thankful unto God for all that he has done. And I'm just thankful uh, to be in his house, uh, to be a part of his family. Having brought us together here at the uh, Oakland Church and uh, part of a family, and we're just thankful unto God for what he has done. You know, at the beginning of the year, you set out uh, to do great things. Yeah. Some you accomplish, some you don't. Yeah. But you get up each and every day realizing that God has given you another day. Right. If you didn't get it right yesterday, he's given you another day yeah. to get it right. Yeah. Uh, we set out some plans and we... When we met back in February and in March, and, and we set out what we were going to do, uh, a lot of things happened in between, but uh, we, we, we trudged forward anyway, uh, believing and having faith in God uh, that he would keep us. And I don't know if any of you, and I, 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 I'm not going to quiz anybody, but uh, to just ask you, how long did it take you to realize that there was no sign? out in front of the building. <laughs> you know, so some folks had just, had just came up to me last week and said, Brother Griffin, what happened to the sign? And I just said, that sign has been gone since before Thanksgiving. We thought that, uh, that the new sign would be in by then, uh, but it just came in yesterday, and it should be on tomorrow. And so uh, we're just thankful that that project is almost complete. Now, if somebody would have told me that it was going to take to December 31st uh, to get this done, we began the, the project back in May. And the city of Southfield, you know, they are something to, to contend with. Uh, but, but God, our God, is mightier uh, than any uh, board of zones or zoning board or ordinance, whatever we call it. Uh, but we, we're thankful that they look out for our best interests. Uh, but uh, but it can take some time uh, to do that. And so uh, we're just thankful that we have gotten over so many hurdles uh, with them and that the sign is finally in. And uh, we will make sure that uh, the electrical will take care of tomorrow. And uh, we should be we should be signing something. At least Happy New Year uh, to everybody uh, in the community. And uh, we, we're going to dedicate it next Sunday. So be here next Sunday. Bring your coats and everything. We're going to go out there and dedicate it to the Lord. Amen. To the praise and honor of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, because uh, it has been a project. Now, 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 now let me just say that uh, it ain't, it's, now I want to say it ain't fully paid for yet. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes when people don't see anything, they, they stop giving to it. Wow. And so I think some of you thought that we had forgotten about it and all of that. And we haven't talked about it as much, but now it's there, wow. and it still has to be paid for. And one of the good things is uh, they've given us 10 months, same as cash. So uh, half of it is down already, and so, so if you want to help that every month, there's a $1,500 uh, note on that every month, same as cash. Those signs are not inexpensive. Wow. You got to get quiet on me. You got to get quiet on me. Don't be quiet. Don't get quiet. Because let me tell you, we told you about the kitchen as well. Wow. And we just finally got the permits 
to do the work in the kitchen. And so that will begin in January, so long as, as uh, the health department doesn't stop us. Uh, but uh, we have those people who are going to be taking the classes for that, and, and uh, that's already been assigned. And so, uh, so the, ki the kitchen will probably be out of commission for January and February, but we still know how to feed you, and we still know how to eat if we have to do so. And so, so just, just pray for us, bear with us. The city has worked a little better with us on that, and uh, we're looking forward to, to making those changes as well, uh, to make it a full commercial kitchen. And so we just we're just moving along. Uh, we don't have to always uh, uh, trumpet everything, but we just want you to know where we are on this December 30th, 2018. I know we said a lot at the beginning of the year, but sometimes it takes time to move along. You know how it is in your life. It's the same in the life of the church. And so we're we're making progress slowly, slowly, uh, but surely. Uh, to the glory and honor of God. Amen. I want to, to uh, thank Brother LJ Tillis. Beautiful job on reading today. Outstanding. As, as many of you know, when uh, Brother LJ was back for the summer before he went back to uh, back to college down in Florida AM, he put the Lord on in baptism. Amen. And he's committed himself. You know, that's something when a young person goes away. Yeah and still keeps their commitment to the Lord. Amen. And so he came back, put himself on, put the Lord on, baptism. Now that he's home for the uh, Christmas break, uh, he is working uh, in the Lord's house, and we just appreciate that, and we want to encourage him to keep on keeping on. Amen. This week, uh, brief share, we know that during the holiday season, it's a difficult time uh, for so many. And they had such a wonderful uh, program for those who were uh, going through the holiday, uh, dealing with the difficulty of grief. Uh, while the, the regular program begins again this coming Thursday, I believe it's a 13-week program uh, that begins on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. And uh, there's, a, there's a man who's here this morning uh, as a result of that, uh, who was a part of that class, uh, from the area, from the neighborhood. We're thankful unto God that he is, is all fit to come and be with us today. Amen. And so it is, it's a wonderful ministry uh, to the glory and honor of God. Amen. And it's so needed. So often people uh, are grieving and they don't know what to do. Uh, they don't know how to get up in the morning. They don't know how to continue to go on uh, because uh, the table is, is empty. The seat at the table is empty. Yeah. And so this Grief Share program helps you uh, through the Word of God, helps you through prayer, helps you through community and fellowship uh, to interact with one another and to talk about uh, where you are, to talk about your grief, uh, and to be able to deal with it. Uh, because it's difficult. It's difficult to uh, to have a new normal. You know, realizing that things have changed. And so uh, we're so happy that uh, we have this program uh, here at the Oakland Church. Uh, for those who are here in the audience, those who may be on, uh, watching us live stream on Facebook, uh, to come and be a part of this grief share. Again, let me give the time at 7 p.m. on Thursday night, every Thursday night, uh, come together uh, for this, uh, which will benefit you uh, in the sight of God. This morning, I want to encourage you uh, to stay for Sunday school. We'll be all together. Uh, this is the fifth Sunday, and so we will have zone class, and we'll do it at the Family Life Center. And uh, and we don't typically feed you during Sunday school, but we will feed you during Sunday school today, realizing the kitchen's going to be out in a little bit. And so uh, stay. Uh, we'll have a little refreshment for you, and stay for Bible class. Come. Uh, we need to talk about our ministry, our zone ministry, our ministry of fellowship, uh, we have uh, introduced on many occasions our bring, teach, eat. We need to uh, reemphasize that. And so uh, this will take place in our uh, Bible study, adult Bible study together uh, in the Family Life Center. So please stay uh, during that period so that we can be together on what we strive to do. Be turning in your Bibles to 1 Chronicles chapter 12. 1 
First Chronicles chapter 12. And I want you to come there if you would stand with me for the reading of the word. Pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. Yes. 
Yes. Now, dear Father, as we embark upon a study of your word, help us that we might present to your people what it is that you would have us to know. Help us to not only be hearers, but also doers yes. of your word and your will. And we're thankful, dear Father, for those who are present, those who have been absent due to illness or travel. We're thankful that you have watched over them and brought us, brought them back to us yes. here today. We pray this prayer. We give these things through the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So often, we are confronted by shamans. Well. And uh, in those challenges, it's good to have people around us that can help us to face each day. If I were to bring your attention this morning to David, the book of 1 Samuel, and chapters 27, chapter 30, we find David in the land of the Philistines. And it's interesting that he's there. He's there, first of all, because of, of, of God's leading and, and directing, because God took him out of obscurity, brought him to a point where he was now in the, the, the king's court, playing for him his harp as he sued the king who, whose spirit had become dark, whose spirit had become troubled, and, and David was brought into his courts to, to play the harp for him, to, to soothe his spirit. But you know, there are times when there are those whose spirits are, are, are so distorted that, that there's nothing that you can do to appease. But David did as he was instructed. But then as David began to grow in, in stature, we see him as, as he has the courage and, and the strength to stand for what he believed. And, and he truly believed in a God who was able. When the Philistines had come up against the Israelites with their giant Goliath. It was David who, who said, what is this? The retreat of, of the men of Israel. Why are we retreating when God is there for us? David realized that, that he could not match the giant Goliath height for height. But he also realized that the giant was no match for God. Amen. Amen. And so David went out with, with his elementary uh, weapon of a sling and, and some stones. Wow. And he took down a giant yeah. and cut off his head. All right. David continued in growing in stature. And, and he grew to a point where he was a mighty man, where he was able to go out and fight. And, and they even sung songs to David about his 10,000 that he had slain while Saul, King Saul, Saul had slain his house. And if you could imagine how Saul must have felt having David being exalted to such a point. All right. Saul had determined that, that David needed to be destroyed. Come on. David needed to be taken care of. David needed to be taken out. And so we find David on the run. And that's why I say it's, it's interesting to find him in our text. And over in verse Samuel chapter 27 and chapter 30 to find him in 
the land of the Philistines. Well. And, and, and it's interesting to me because you never know where God will lead you. That's right. That's right. Or where God will put you. One day, that, that, that one that was your enemy, the one that you defeated, the one that you embarrassed, the one that you took down, is the very place where God will put you. All right. And where you will find comfort, and where you will find solace, where you will find a retreat. And that's where David was. Come on, break. In the land of the Philistines. But even in the midst of enemies, David was able to find a team. Well, some of us have been attacked by the enemy. Anybody, anybody know anything about that this morning? Oh, Let me tell you something. The enemy is on the move. Right. And I, I'm not talking about man, I'm talking about the devil. Right. Great. Great. Because the Bible says the devil is like a roaring lion. Yeah. Going about seeking who, who he can devour. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The lion doesn't start off growing. All right. You know, the, the, you know, because if the lion started off roaring, he wouldn't be able to find anybody. All right. Because I, all you would hear is the roar, and then every animal in the kingdom would be running off. That's right. I mean, the lion knows how, how, how to, to perch himself in such a way that he can sneak up on you. Yeah. But then when he, when he gets his prey, then he goes about roaring. He's satisfied then. And so when we talk about the devil going about like a roaring lion, he is satisfied when he has accomplished what he has accomplished in people's lives. And so a lot of us are hearing that roaring lion because he's come in and he's, he's wreaked havoc in our lives, he's wreaked havoc in our homes, he's wreaked havoc in our relationships, and therefore he's roaring because of what he's done. All right. But we want to stop the roar. And so, so David realized that, that, that the enemy has, has tried to stop him. The enemy has tried to take him down. And, and so David could have just simply retreated in, in such a fashion that would say, I'm going to stay away from the enemy. But let me tell you something. You will always have to engage the enemy. All right. It's just, it's just the truth. That's right. I mean, you can take yourself out of every situation. Wow. <laughs> but the enemy won't find you. That's right. So you know what? I'm, I'm just going to stay at home. I'm going to lock my doors and close the door. Yeah. And let me tell you something. The enemy don't need other folk. <laughs> I mean, your own mind yeah. can take you down. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the enemy, he doesn't need external forces. Yeah. All he has to do is get up here and start messing with you, and, and all of a sudden that 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 bit has become has become your casket. That's right. He has killed you in such a way that that you can't even get up in the morning. Yeah. You can't even move, and nobody else is around but the devil. That's right. And so you can try to isolate yourself from other folk, and you can try to isolate yourself from, from everybody, not from, you know, crowds and things like that. You know, you, you, you see movies where, where people, you know, they're running from, from some kind of force, and, and, and they think, well, let's, let's stay away from the crowd. That's where the crowd is. But, but you don't have to worry about that. Let me tell you something. The enemy will find you. That's right. That's right. That's right. Even in your isolation. Yeah. Amen. And so you have to be ready. And so David realized he could not retreat and, and think that somehow he was going to get away from Saul. But sometimes in, in our retreat, we have an opportunity to regain our strength. Yeah. Think about it. Elijah, the great man, great prophet, had gone out and slain thousands of prophets of Baal. Did great things. We could go through the story. But then it was King Jezebel who said, you know, before the night is over, I'm going to take his life. And Elijah got, he got scared. And he ran and hid on her juniper tree. And God had to ask him, let me just say, let me just say that God is all powerful. God is all powerful. 
But God asks us questions at times to get us to recognize them. And so God asks Elijah, what are you doing here? Well, you know, just like he asked Adam. Adam, where art thou? He knew where Adam was. But he needed Adam to recognize where he was. He needed Adam to recognize something had changed. Yeah. And so in, in questioning Elijah, he had to ask him, you know, what are you doing here? Why are you underneath this tree? All right. And Elijah's like, you know, I've been faithful over all these things, and I'm the last one. I'm the only one left that continues to serve. All right. Have you ever felt that way, like you're the last one? And like everybody around you is heathens. Wow. <laughs> I'm the last good Christian. <laughs> Some of y'all probably think that at this point. You know, Sam, Sam, I'm with you. I'm singing with you, Sam. But I'm just surrounded by heathens this morning. They don't sing like I sing. Don't be looking around. So Elijah, he thought that he was the, the only one, and, and God allowed him to, to have his pity party. Yes. God attended to his needs in the midst of all of this. And, and, and finally, when Elijah said this, God had to say to him, I have, I have, I have thousands over here who have never bent a knee to bear. God wanted to realize that, that you're not the only one. You might be going through something right now, but I've got others who are still standing strong. So don't think that just because you're going through what you're going through, that there are other people who have gone through it and who are standing tall. All right, it's all right. Who have not compromised. It's all right. Who have not been to me. Well. Who have stayed with me. And then so, so, so we have people who who find themselves in a retreat, and and, and that's okay at times. Because sometimes the enemy gets overwhelming. Yeah. It's overwhelming. Everybody. And so you have, to, you have to take a step back. And, and so when you take a step back, you, you, there are times when you have to assess, where are you? That's right. You have to assess, why am I here? And so David is in this, in this process of, of rebuilding. And, and let me just say, it's when, when, you, when you're, you're rebuilding, it's good to have people around you Amen. who can help to build you up. Amen. Amen. Because we have a lot of folk who will always tear you down. Amen. But, but, but it's, it's good to have somebody who can build you up. Amen. You know, I, there was a, uh, I was in uh, my current principal's uh, office when she was assistant principal one day, and she had on a bulletin board. Not everybody can sit in your front row. They were the same. And I looked for it. I wanted it for this sermon. I just could not find it. But, but, but I, I just want to make the point that, that not everybody should sit in your front row. That's right. Not everybody should be, if they're going to be in your audience, they shouldn't be that close to you. Right. Put them somewhere up in the balcony. <laughs> they should all be, be sitting in your front row. I mean, if you're going to have somebody sitting in your front row, you need to have somebody that's going to cheer you on when you're doing good. And you need to have the folks who say, I'll, I'll watch it, brother. Yeah. All right. When you go astray. You know, you want somebody in your front row that's, that's going to help you and that's going to build you up. Get you ready for battle. Not to moralize you, but get you ready to, to fight the battle, to fight on. Amen. And so you want folk in your in your front row who, who will do that. Amen. And, Amen. and you can sit in their front row too. Amen. And be an encourager to them. Amen. And so David is now putting together his his, his people. And, 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 and I, I want to take a look at, at, at some of the people that David has on his team. When we look at, at, at uh, First Chronicles chapter 12, and, and, and I, I want to look at it from the, the uh, New King James because of the, the, the wording here, the, the usage here. I like the way he says, this is verse 8. 
He says, Some Gadites joined David at the stronghold in the wilderness. Mighty men of battle. Men trained for battle. Who could handle the shield and, and spear. Whose faces were like the faces of lions. And were as swift as gazelles on the mountain. Listen to that. Mighty men of valor. They were people who had, had courage. They had a, a warrior spirit. You know, when, 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 you're, when, you're, when you're building your team, you need, you need folks who have, have courage. You know, because let me tell you something. If you don't have people with courage on your team, when something happens, they're going to leave you. I mean, you get yourself out there, you talk about the lion roaring and all of a sudden, and, and you all see a lion, and, and you look around and you say, what are we going to do? And there ain't nobody. <laughs> they, just, they just left you. You all by yourself. Wow. But there's something about David as he as he puts his team together. He has a, a team of, of men who are who are mighty men of valor, men who have courage and a, a warrior spirit. That they will stand toe to toe with the enemy and not allow him to advance yeah. in your life. Amen. So men who are trained for battle. Amen. You know, when I look at that, I think about patience. Right. Training <laughs> takes patience. Right. To get to a point where you are skilled takes patience. Amen. You know, sometimes we get so quick, or we want to do things so quickly that, that we don't want to we don't want to spend the time. To, to, to get the, the type of, uh, of training that, that's necessary, the type of skill that's necessary to do what needs to be done. Amen. All of a sudden, we just jump into it and think, I got it. Amen. You, ever, you ever seen that, especially in kids, they say, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 let me, let me, no, 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 I got it. Yeah. You let them go, and all of a sudden, you, you, I don't know if any of you remember training kids, uh, you know, ride a bike. Have you ever seen, seen a child, you know, training a child to ride a bike? You hold on to them and say, okay, all right, you got the front, you got the back, you hold on to them. Training goes to gone, everything, you hold on to them. I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> you let them go, and, and don't let there be bushes on the side. I mean, they all up there. Not that they can't do it. It's just that they, they need the patience. They need a little bit more guidance to get them where they need to be. And so, so when we look at these men who are trained for battle, these are individuals who put the time in. They, 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 you know, they, they burn the midnight, midnight oil to be ready for battle. Because if you're going to be a, a mighty warrior, you need to be trained Amen. for that. Amen. Because you just don't know what might come up. That's right. Amen. 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 And see, warriors, as they are trained, they're trained for everything. Amen. Things you wouldn't even think about. Yeah. I mean, they are, they are just skilled. And, 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 and you know, they're swinging sword and, and folk will allow them to swing their swords at them to train them yeah. to get them ready for that. It's the men who can handle a shield and spear. You know, what you need are people who are skilled in the use of essential weapons. Well, you know, you don't want to go out in the battle just, you know what, 
I just want to, I'm going to wing it. <laughs> you know, I, th I, th I think I got this, I'm going to wing it. Yeah. No, you, you need to take some stuff with you. All right. You got a shield, which is a, a defensive weapon. Amen. And you got a sword, which is an offensive weapon. All right. I mean, because you, you want you want folks on your team who are not only skilled at defense. All right. Because sometimes you got to defend yourself. Yeah, it's fine. But you want you want people on your team also who are skilled in offense. It's fine. It's fine. Because sometimes you got to take the fight to the devil. Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. I mean, sometimes it's not always about sitting back and waiting for the devil to find you, like you playing hide and seek. Sometimes you got to go where he is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a song that choir used to sing. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Sometimes you got to go in the enemy's camp and take back what he stole from you because he ain't gonna give it back by you sitting back. And so you want folks who, who are skilled in, in offensive weapons as well as defensive weapons. David is building his team. Mighty men of God. Trained for God. Skilled in the, in the use of the shield and, 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 and spear. He also, as he looks at them, he says they have the faces that were like that of the face of the lion. Well, what is he saying? He's talking about when you look at it, they have a calm presence about them. You see, you see, there's something about being the king of the jungle. <laughs> you know, you, you, we can say a lot about a lot of different animals. But you know what? The, 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 the lion is the king of the jungle. There are, there are a lot of animals that are faster and smarter and possibly even stronger than the lion. But somehow the lion has been dubbed the king of the jungle. And you've got to look at a lion to, to, to tell why. I mean, when you look at him, he, he looks tough. He looks bad. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're beautiful creatures yeah. to look at on the outside of a fence. <laughs> beautiful creatures. But as he struts around, you can see his, his majesty. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at the face. He ain't done <laughs> And you look at it and say, there's it, it, just a, a calm presence about it. You want folks on your team when, you know, when, when things happen, they don't look as worried as you are. <laughs> you look at them and all of a sudden sweat just dropping. Shit. Great. Great. I'm going to beat this up. Uh, you, know, you, you remember, uh, you, you remember uh, the Wizard of Oz? <laughs> the cowardly lion? I mean, I mean, that's how they look. I mean, you, you want people on your team that, that can give you a, a calm reassurance. In the midst of a storm, they, you know, they, you know they're, not, they're not so fearful. They're not jumping around like, you know, what's, what's going on? But a calm presence. So you know what you want to do this year? It's going to be all right. You know, you, you think this, you know, you think the enemy has advanced, but, but let me tell you. My God. That's right. All right. All right. You see, yeah. you, need, you need folks in your, in your life that have that, that calm demeanor That's right. yeah. and presence that can calm you down when you get all uptight. You don't want them folks.
talk that are just going to agitate you even more. I mean, you were agitated, but you, you leave the president, and, and you just, you know, you're just ready to go out and kill yourself. <laughs> After being in their presence. Well, uh, but you want somebody that's going to that's gonna bring you down. Yeah, they might. That will calm you down. And, and, and they, they don't even have to say anything. You know, there's some folks just being in their presence yeah. well, makes things all right. Amen. Amen. Just Amen. to know, you know, Brother So and so is here, okay? Things gonna be all right. Amen. Amen. Sister So and so sitting out there. I know everybody. Amen. Great. I ain't worried about nothing. Yeah. There are folks who have that demeanor, that calmness, that presence, that confidence of fierce and calm beings. And finally, there are those who are swift as gazelles All right. on the mountains. These are people who are mobile, active. All right. They're ready for battle. Yeah. They're not, you know, it's not like, you know, you know, we got to, we got to get up and we got to go. All right, let me get my hands on my shoes. <laughs> let me find some pants to put on. <laughs> when you're ready for battle, you got, you got to have your stuff together. Amen. That's all right. And ready to go. All right. Let me tell you something. You move too slow, the enemy will overtake you. You, you've seen these movies where, and I, I hate that I'm doing all these movie references. You see these movies and folk falling down all over the place. And they're, not, they're not ready to move. I mean, you know, you need those folks who are, are swift like a gazelle that can move when it's time to move. They can, they can, they can make a decision in, in a quick second because you don't have the time. You don't have the luxury of time. Yeah. We got to do something, and we got to do it now. Right. Well, you, you got to be ready. You got to be equipped. You, have, you, you, know, you got to have your stuff together right. so that you can make your move. Yeah. Our prayer is that when we look at 2019, as you build your team, people who surround you, people who are going to help you, to defeat the enemy, yeah, yeah. to overcome the enemy, that you have folks on your team like David Amen. had as he built his team. One final thing I want to point out. Go with me. Stay with me in 1 Chronicles chapter 12. There were others who came to David. In verse number 32, says from Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Other translations say these were men who understood the signs of the time. Well, let me tell you something. As you build your team, you need folks on your team that understand what time it is. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. There's been a lot of folks destroyed because they had, didn't have people on their team who knew what time it was. Well, let me tell you something. There are some folks who just know what time to leave and what time to show up. And let me tell you something, a lot of young folk, a lot of us, when we were young and even old, got ourselves in trouble because when that person who understood the signs of the time got up and left, they did, you did, get up and leave with them. All right. Let me tell you something. This is a distinct quality. Not everybody understands. Yeah. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. Not everybody understands 
the sign yes. of the time. Yes. All right. That's right. If we all understood the sign of the time, we would all be millionaires yes. right now. That's right. That's right. There are some folks from a financial standpoint who can look around and look at what's happening and say, I know exactly what to invest in. Yeah. I know exactly where to put my money. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm aware of the nature of, of the times in which we live. They can look at what people are, are, are attracted to, what people are doing, and, and the trends that are happening, and they can read the times and say, I know exactly how I need to invest my money. Well. You know, while we're, while we're sitting there saying, oh yeah, Sears stock is cheap, I'm going to get me some Sears. I've always wanted some Sears. <laughs> That Toys R Us? Uh, I know kids like toys. Yeah. But, 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 you know, if you are not aware of the signs of the time, you need to have somebody on your team who knows what time it is. Let me tell you something. certain time today. Yeah. But there are some folks who are still stuck in a time of yesterday. Right. Yesterday is gone. Today is here. Right. And, and there are folks who are, who are still trying to do today with what they, what they were doing yesterday. Right. But the time has moved on. That's right. That's right. These folks, the men of Israel, understood the times, they understood the signs, and, and these were men who had been devoted and loyal to Saul. Saul was still on the throne. David was on the run. Wow. But these men were so wise. These were men who were known for their wisdom. All right. Moses recognized they were wise men. David understood them to be wise men. And so, so in their wisdom, they're looking at Saul. Saul is still on the throne, but there's something about Saul that they see that the same won't answer. And so, so as they're looking at, at, at all of the signs, they, they're saying, you know what? We need to go see David. We need to go sit down and have a talk with them. Because the nature of the time is that Saul so ain't going to last very long. Have you, ever, have you ever had people like that in your life that understood things? And, and, and you wonder why they moved on or away from it or whatever. And then all of a sudden you read, connect later on, and they said, you know what, I just had to wait. Let you, let you see it for yourself. All right. You couldn't see it at the time. You couldn't understand. I knew what I saw. I saw it happen. I saw what was about to happen. But you weren't there yet. You weren't listening. You didn't want to listen. Am I right? There are other folks who, who have that, that ability to know what time it is. We, we, we call them a lot of times people who are, who are ahead of ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're saying and doing things and it's like, you know, why are they doing that? Well, you know, it's like Moses, but not Moses. Noah, out there building an ark. Yeah. It's never rained. But you're building an ark. Yeah. And now all of a sudden the rain has come. You ready. Well. And we're not. Everybody. Men of this car. We need people on our team who knew and who know what time it is. They know when to leave. They know when to show up. They know the nature of the time. Yeah. 
me tell you something. There are some things that are never coming back. That's right. Am I right about that? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't care what you say. You know, some things that have run its course and, and passed its time. And, and you know, it, it's a funny thing. In the church, we get we get so stuck on so 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 many things, yeah. and we don't recognize the the sign of the time. There are some things that that we need to be ready for. Yeah. I mean, we need to be we need to be equipping ourselves because we are, we have a, a keen understanding of, of the nature of, of the times. You know, you, 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 one of the things that's so frustrating is you sit and, and talk to folk and 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 and, and, and they just, they talk about the same thing they've been talking about. And it may not happen to y'all, but I'm not even preaching. I, I sit with other folk all the time. They talk about the same stuff. All right. The things change. In education, things change. You don't educate kids the same way today that you did 30 years ago. I mean, when I could sit in class, when I could sit, <laughs> there was a certain way that the teacher could teach me. But you can't teach the kids the same way today. Kids who've been, who, you know, they've been televised and, and uh, electronized and <laughs> computerized and, and every kind of mind. Don't have the same attention span. The times and, and the nature of times have, have changed. But we still do things as if we live in, in the past. Wow. And we wonder why it is that we fail. Mm -hmm. The same is true in our personal lives. We wonder why it is that, that we fail. It's because we don't realize the time that we don't have hope in our team. Who understand what time it is. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. But it's good to listen. So what do you see? What, 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 what's about to happen? What, what, what's going on? What, what do I need to be aware of? You know, when I, when I was a youngster, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't go to their wedding parties. I didn't, I didn't go to the morning college. Not at all. I stay home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not. <laughs> but I've seen them on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they're, they're both who, you know, they say, you know, man, we better get out of here. One week, the other you hear about on the TV is news. Because one knew the times, the nature of the other didn't, and didn't listen. We need folks who understand the time in which we live. Amen. And can help us to navigate where we are. Amen. Who's on your team? Who's on your team? Who are you surrounding yourself with? And let me tell you something, there's nothing wrong with bringing ties. There's nothing wrong with loving folk from a distance. Say, so you know what, I love you, but I, you know what, I just, you know, I'm equipping myself this year to defeat the, the enemy. And then, let me tell you something, you know, you know, you, 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 you just, you just, you know, you just get too many ways in for the enemy to come into my life. Mm -hmm. And I need, I need to close those breaches. I need to, I need to close those holes. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, you don't have to say that. You don't have to have these conversations. Just do it. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it can be, it can be offensive. I, I'm telling you what you thought of me. Because I don't want anybody, all of a sudden next week we have conferences with different people because, you know, Brother Jared said, I need to close this breach. I need to, you know, you just make me too vulnerable. You just ought to know that. And 
say, you know what, you know, I got, I got too much to do. I got too much on my mind. I got too much on my plate. I got things I need to do. I got a purpose that I need to have. And as you build your team, get, your, get the right people that you can help with that to help you. To the glory and honor of God. That's what it's all about. It's moving forward to the glory and honor of God. Who's on your team this morning? Let me tell you something. Don't leave here today without having Jesus at the center and focus of your team. Amen. He is everything that I have stated. Amen. And more. Amen. You need him on your team. Amen. Amen. Let me correct that. You need to be on his team. Amen. 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 So that he can help you to be the person that you want to be. Amen. Amen. If you've not accepted the Lord Jesus today, the invitation is yours. To accept him first by hearing the gospel, believing the same, repenting of your sins, confessing Jesus Christ to be the Son of the living God, and then be baptized with the sins of the Lord's day. What better way to put 2018 to rest and to go forward in 2019 than to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? We stand ready and willing with you to pray for those who stand in need of prayer. And let me let me also, before we before we close and turn over the song, here. January 7th. We want to begin our 21 days of fasting. As we begin this new year, as you get your tent together, and, and I, I know January 1st would be a hard thing for a lot of folks. And uh, we, we have our breakfast January 1st. And, and so January 2nd, when we get up January 2nd, the clock turns midnight January 2nd. 21 days from January 2nd to January 22nd. Commit ourselves to fasting. And prayer. For those of you who need a reminder of what that means, we'll have some, we'll have some uh, handouts in for you so that you can see. But it also means that uh, as you do that each day, spend some time in fellowship with your brother and sister in Christ and pray for them. Pray together. Encourage one another. Start building the team that needs to be built around you that can help you to be what you need to be in the sight of God. And so, don't look at 2019 as something that's scary or whatever, because with God, all things are possible. Oh, all things are possible. Next year, we're going to have a theme for every month. And the theme for the month of January is possibilities. Possibilities. Start putting that in your mind. Start putting that in your mind. The month of January, our focus and our theme is possibilities. Possibilities. You have a blank slate every day. What are the possibilities? What are the things that you can what can God accomplish through you as we begin 2019? Start putting that on your calendar. Start recognizing that. We'll give you some scriptures that go along with it that you can meditate on each and every day throughout the month of January. Possibilities. Possibilities. Don't let me just be the only one who is, who is calling this out. Everybody in your class, wherever you are, remind each other that our thing for January is possibilities. Possibilities. Stand back. Thank you. 